Hello, I'm Neil Miles, Senior Soil Scientist at SASRI. In this video we're going to be looking at soil testing. Soil testing is the only reliable way of determining the amounts and types of nutrients required for production of a sugarcane crop. However, for soil testing to be successful, there are a number of factors that need to be taken into consideration. One of the most important is the collection of the soil sample. And that's what we're going to be looking at over the next couple of minutes. First thing is that a very small quantity of soil, literally this much, is representing the thousands of tons of soil in the field. Therefore, we must make sure that this soil, the sample submitted, truly reflects what's going on in the field. If the soil sample is not taken properly, it becomes the weak link in the soil testing process. So how do we ensure that the soil sample is taken properly and is truly representative? The area from which the soil sample is taken may vary from one hectare to many hectares. But what's important is that the area should have the same or similar soil types. Another important aspect is that the area should have had the same management history. In other words, it should have been treated similarly with regard to fertilization and liming, green manure cropping or the application of manures. If the soil types or the management history is different, then you will need to submit separate samples from the different soil types and from the areas having different management histories. The samples that you submit for analysis, each sample must be made up of 20 or 30 sub-samples taken in a zigzag pattern across the field. For example, if this is your field, then samples must be taken across the field in a zigzag fashion. Avoid antils, old roads, and filter cake or fertilizer dumps when sampling. Another thing to bear in mind is that the sampling depth must be kept constant for determining the nutritional requirements of the crop. The ideal implement for taking topsoil samples is this beta soil sampler. This soil sampler was developed by SASRI. The advantage of the sampler is that it enables samples to be taken to a constant depth with minimum effort. So a large number of samples can be collected in a relatively short time and the total volume of soil is minimal. Once we've established the area to sample then, and we've got our sampler with a bag attached, this is then how we go about taking a sample. To take a sample, clear away most of the trash, and then push the soil sampler in, using the weight of your body with your foot to ensure that it goes into the full depth. Take it out and you can tap the sample on the ground to make sure the sample falls through. Another way is to use a pig, tap the sample with a pig to ensure that all the soil falls through. You then move to the next spot to collect another soil sample. Turn it upside down. Tap it with a wooden pig to ensure that the soil falls through into the packet. Continue this process until all the sub-samples have been taken. Once we've taken 30 cores, sub-samples, we then take the packet off of the sampler. And the important thing at this stage is to thoroughly mix the sample. To ensure that you've got a well mixed homogeneous sample. So we mix it up thoroughly in the packet. And once that's done, you take a FAS soil sample box, which has previously been labeled with your name, contact number must be completed, grower number very important, field number of course is very important, and also the soil sampling depth. All this information must be supplied on the soil sample box. In this case, the sampling depth is the standard sampling depth for sugarcane, which is 20 centimeters on the auger. So we open up this box for filling with the soil that we've taken for the sample. Fill the box with this well-mixed soil.
Make sure that the box is absolutely full so that the lab gets a good quantity of soil. Close the box and that's ready for submission to the lab. Along with the soil sample, a soil sample submission form must also be sent to the lab. Details must be filled in of uh, the fields, the recommendations that are required, the anticipated yield and all the grower details. The sample is now ready to be sent to the laboratory for analysis. Make sure that the laboratory it goes to is a reputable laboratory. At SASRI, our recommendations are based on decades of field trial research where we've accurately established the nutrient and lime requirements of sugarcane. Our recommendations also ensure sustainability of the whole farming operation. Fertilizer and lime is an expensive part of the whole production operation. To ensure that it's money well spent, one needs to follow the advice that's been given in this video. To recap, use Sassri's beta sampler for easy, accurate sampling. Keep the sampling depth consistently at 20 centimeters for sugarcane. Take about 20 to 30 subsamples for a single sample. The area should have the same or similar soil types. The area should have had the same management history. Mix subsamples thoroughly before extracting the final sample. Send samples to a reputable laboratory. SASRI's FAS is supported by years of research into sugarcane agriculture and is best placed to offer the correct advice. Besides topsoil sampling that we've just spoken about, there's also a need to take samples to depth in the case of sugarcane production. This is because sugarcane roots are not restricted to the top 20 centimeters of soil, but will penetrate to a depth of a meter or more. However, if there's acidity problems in the subsoil, root development is restricted. And the reason for taking subsoil samples is to test for acidity in the subsoils, particularly in the dryland cropping areas. To take depth samples, we use a screw-in type auger, such as this, which has been marked in terms of depth intervals, 20, 40, 60, 80. When we take the samples, all the 20 centimeter depth samples are kept separate and kept as a separate sample. 20 to 40 comprise a separate sample, etc. Up to 80 centimeters of depth. That was a 0 to 20. Now we're taking the next, next depth, 20 to 40, and that's going to go in a different packet. Because subsoils tend to be less variable than topsoils, we need to repeat this process only three or four times across the field, collecting all the samples from the different depths in their selective packets. We advise growers in the rain-fed areas to carry out subsoil sampling with every planting at every plant crop. If you follow the advice given in this video in terms of topsoil sampling and subsoil sampling, you will ensure maximum efficiency in the use of fertilizers and limes, and you'll optimize yields.